in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed micah chapter 4 let's understand the cosmos let's deal with this system because this conference was so designed to supply spiritual intelligence to bring us to a point where we thoroughly understand the system that we're living in so that we can build an advantage to the end that the saints rise in light and to the end that the Christ be glorified never forget that the object behind everything we do is to see Christ revealed and to see Christ glorified there must be a space in my rising my lifting my advancement for the revelation and the glorification of the Christ are we together and the Bible tells us remember to be wise as serpents now he's teaching us how to live in the cosmos and he say you will need to borrow the philosophy of a serpent every time the bible uses the word serpent in scripture it always is linked to deception it's always linked to the devil but then most of the time but now he's saying when it has to do with living in the cosmos you will need to borrow the intelligence of the serpent are we blessed so Micah chapter 4 let's start let's see where God will help us it says but in the last days prophet Micah is speaking it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people although it is upwards will flow to it this is a very very serious description now the bible says listen mountains in scripture generally talk about spheres of influence they talk about systems and structures are we together now now the cosmos was built twofold number one there is the earth the physical territory and then number two there is the sociological system that is made up of men please understand this and i hope you understand that man was and is the zenith of god's creation the apex of his artistry the object of his his creativity is man and the story of man is a long story i cannot begin to start it here we'll spend the whole day discussing the story because most men do not know that they are in the middle of an ancient story it says there was war in heaven are we together now john the revelator by the spirit caught in the isle of patmos he began to document the things that he was seeing and he said once upon a time there was an old story in the heavenly that there was war one who the bible identifies as satan once upon a time the son of the morning and then the bible says that there was war even in heaven and that he attempted treason satan did not want to dethrone god he wanted to run a parallel government so that you could choose god or him it is still his system today everywhere he sees God he comes as the other option he doesn't necessarily want to replace he wants to be an equal option you have to understand this are we together and so the Bible says because if you do not understand man then you will not understand the cosmos and dominion will be impossible you see this conference is 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 really a very strategic teaching 
I'm, I'm just trying to create the foundation for us to understand the prophecy of Micah and then deal with a few things and so the Bible tells us that there was rebellion in heaven and Satan was judged he contended with Archangel Michael and he could not prevail and a space was no longer found for him are we together now and then he was cast to the earth and there was a lamentation first there was joy in heaven but there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth that satan that old serpent so he's not young anything old must be respected old money old ideas old enemies anything old has the advantage of experience listen carefully we're dealing with the cosmos here it's not to put fear it's just it's just an information that he's called an old serpent he's been cast to the earth so he's lamenting and saying hey earth, beware this guy is a master of treason and he's come within your domain the next time we hear about that old serpent he found his way through the system of earth to sit upon this mountain he was cast from earth as a failure but he utilized his experience to collect the keys of so now began to build a system reflecting him remember earth was warned they said beware of this guy he's dangerous and the earth neglected that warning and by the time Jesus comes, Satan says, I have the keys. Look at the glory of the world. Whoever can fish himself through a system and become king, there is a strategy there we must learn. Are you getting all that I've been saying? So the Bible says, when you are wise, be wise as serpents. There is a secret of dominion. A serpent has no hands and no legs, yet you run away from it. A serpent may not even run faster than you. Only one point of attack. Yet it is not threatened by any. When a lion eats, you see the evidence. A serpent swallows and the digestion happens inside. There are powerful... You don't see serpents moving in twos. I'm, I'm just giving you an idea. Please sit down. So this cosmos we are living in, listen carefully. The Bible says forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. It didn't say on earth. He told you the domain where the word of God has entered its Sabbath, heaven. But on earth there is still a contention. And one day Revelations 11 and verse 15 will become a reality. That the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of we his Christ and then the prophecy of Daniel becomes a reality that he will reign forever and ever it's amazing that the book ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are we blessed but for now we are mandated having accepted Christ the advantage of his life in our lives the Bible tells us that we must now understand the cosmos that not everybody is born again that not everybody subscribes to your ideologies and that you must sustain the intelligence to be able to live in the cosmos still succeed and glorify the name of the Christ are we blessed so this will take a system of mentorship supplying us the various dimensions of information Micah in the last days he's giving you an information that it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and that action will be so attractive the Bible says people shall flow to it verse 2 it says they shall say unto one another come let us go up to the it started 
as the house of God, the mountain of God. Now it says the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us. This will be the advantage of that mountain. They are privy to information that make for dominion. Come and show us the secrets. He will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Prophet Isaiah is buttressing on these revelations, verse 1. He starts by saying, arise. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. He says, shine. And he tells you why. He says, for thy light is come. Not your light is around. Just like faith, light, comet. It can come to you. The light has always been there, but until it comes to you, you cannot arise. You don't arise because you are tired of sitting. You arise because your light is come. And then the Bible says the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified puts it in a very interesting way. It says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says rise to a new light. Rise. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The next verse says, for darkness. Now, this is, a pro this, is, this is very prophetic. The Bible is giving us an insider information so that we are not surprised. It says a time will come in the age of, of the church and in the dealings here in the cosmos that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you oh i receive verse three hallelujah it says gentiles now here it is a time will come we'll stop looking for them there is a system that will be at work in us that will compel gentiles to come to thy light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of thy rising hallelujah praise the Lord this is very very powerful darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but upon you there is an advantage the advantage is light and that that light will one day compel the nations to come and see and acknowledge and when Sheba came to Solomon she did not come empty she came with gifts even though he was blessed because whoever possesses that light cannot be ignored within the context of a generation it is impossible neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel if the lamp is not lit no problem you can throw it anywhere but provided there is light it is impossible to hide light Put a cloth upon light, you will still know there is light. Hide it in darkness, you will still know there is light. Light cannot be hidden. When Jesus came teaching in his Beatitudes, he still began to teach and he said, You are the light of the cosmos. That means the definition of darkness is the world without you. You are the light of the world. You are akin to a city that is set on a hill. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel. Then it says, you are the salt of the earth. You are not the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth. The powerful thing about salt is you can put it in food anytime. There are ingredients that if you, if you put it late, you've messed up the whole meal. But even when the food is done and it's tasteless, you can still do something about it. Are we blessed we are called light we are called salt now let's let's deal with let's deal with these things when I, I gave us the illustration yesterday when Jesus took Satan up the mountain and showed him the glories of this world that means the glories of this world are hidden in the mountains are we together now let me begin to deal with Micah's prophecy there is a location where you find the glories of the world the word glory is the Hebrew word um, kabod. Am I right? The Greek is doxa. 
and the original expression is the weightiness of a thing is an attempt to measure the worth of a thing so that when you want to know the worth of earth when you want to know the riches the vastness of the earth it tells you the location that the glories are residing within the mountains are we together now the glory the riches the influence now let me say one more thing before i begin to teach the gospel please look up the bible ties what we know to be the coming the end of the age you know rumors of wars and so on and so forth and um i may not argue with the fact that you know people teach that there are signs of the end times and the bible does recognize these things as signs but there is only one ultimate sign of the end time that the bible teaches us it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the earth and then the end will come all of the things we call signs are beginnings of birth pains the bible says there is only one sign that the moment you see that the teaching of the kingdom the influence of the government of heaven begins to permeate systems and structures get ready because the dominion of the saints is about to be revealed and christ is coming as the king of we kings he's not coming for a weak church he's coming for a bride that is adorned are we are we together now these are very vital informations that must be it must be at the back of your mind as we explore dealing with the cosmos if not you will be distracted these are the things that peg your success and keep you at the level of balance because success without these understandings will distract you you will veer off there are too many options when you are blessed so this this information creates the coordinates so that the things that destroy others do not destroy you the bible says even fools can prosper the only advantage is that their prosperity will or their disadvantage is that their prosperity will destroy them and a fool is one who says in his heart there is no god that means he acts as though there is no god are we blessed we have to understand the system so the glories are hidden within the mountains whoever wants to access the glory of the earth must sustain the intelligence to ascend those mountains and find a space there now listen very carefully these mountains please can i have seven people just seven gentlemen just come stand here the mountains are called mind control systems please write them down please just stand at my, it's not an impartation oh dear just, just please just stand you know every time i call for people like this they run they think i'm going to lay hands seven of you are they seven okay thank you thank you now watch this watch this south africa please watch this the bible lets us know that the glories of the earth are hidden in the mountains are you following my my discourse now that means if i can find and i told you mountains represent systems and structures of influence in fact um, let me digress a bit and talk about the gospel the word gospel means good news tidings that bring joy are we together now the bible teaches us that there are two dimensions to the gospel please say two dimensions one more time say two dimensions there is the gospel as a message that saves that's the first dimension and sadly the only dimension that most of the church knows there is the gospel as a message what is the content of that message a revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son targeted towards that object of his love called man and then by extension creation to the end that believing that report we will have the life of god what john calls the way do you agree that is the message of the gospel but there is the ideology of the gospel now this is the dimension that the church is ignorant of there is the gospel as a message 
and there is the gospel as a mind control system there is the gospel as an ideology the ideology of the gospel is the ideology that seeks to see and make christ enthroned all across the cosmos it is the ideology if all you have is the message of the gospel you are saved but you are not safe because your territory the 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 message affects you alone it is the ideology that affects your cosmos please follow me we're dealing with something very serious here i have believed that message it profits me alone but there is something the ideology can do to my mind that is what will bring the cosmos under the influence of the christ one more concept i defined and then we we'll begin to teach on this am i wasting your time let's talk about kingdom advancement i love you too thank you kingdom advance listen there is such a concept called kingdom advancement and i must teach you what it is what is kingdom advancement if you want to write please write this down kingdom advance is the deploying of every and any scriptural strategy the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that enthrones christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance i repeat the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that leads to the enthroning of the christ first across the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activity south africa please look at me it is not difficult to see christ glorified if you understand this so when you say you are advancing the kingdom this is what you are saying i am an active contributor to seeing that the lordship of the christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men that's called evangelism second across the strata of human activities that's called influence so the key to kingdom advance is both evangelism and influence please see after me evangelism and then say influence for many years the church in africa and we are well-meaning people sincerely we have embraced evangelism and so we we are concerned with the the establishment of the lordship of the christ across the hearts of men and so we have sincere people morally sound they love god but the system is still under the control of a government that continues to frustrate and sabotage the progress of the church and so it, the remedy is a correct understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that it will take both evangelism and influence in that order not influence before evangelism no christ must be enthroned in our hearts then enthroned in our territory are we blessed are you following me now so kingdom advance and let me tell you this because i'm about to explain to us what we call purpose and explain to us what we call assignment or destiny we've complicated it with several teachings there is absolutely nothing complicated about purpose or assignment your purpose and assignment is simply the role you have to play in that universal agenda called kingdom advance we have been distributed roles to play and when you find your role the geography of your dominion the geography of your witness is called your assignment are we blessed so if all i have is jesus in my heart i am happy but my children are in trouble your territory is in trouble someone will sign a policy one day that will completely sabotage everything you have built for kingdom come it was because joseph had access to the king that god's covenant people were saved jacob was a prophet but they would have still died it took a man of influence 
You've heard me say it for those of you who listen to my teachings. The body of Jesus is hanging on a tree. And no prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. Who had access to government to negotiate the body of the Christ to come down. He owned an estate that we called a tomb. And that was where the body was dropped. For your salvation. Look at the forces that played their roles. Don't just look at the cross alone. The grave too played a role. The tomb played a role. Otherwise we will not be able to say. Oh death where is your sting? Oh grave where is your victory? So ministry therefore. Is not just preaching. It's not just teaching. You begin to minister the day you find your place in this agenda. The fivefold or fourfold, as we argue, really speaking, are not ministers. They are the gifts that prepare the ministers. The Bible says he gave gifts unto men. Ephesians 4. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are men to men. He gave men called gifts to men. And the assignment of those gifts, the Bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It says for the perfecting, the maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured by those gifts will do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Seeing to it that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. I will tell you why many people pray, God bless me, God lift me. And they never seem to see certain levels of territorial blessings. It's not because you cannot buy and sell. It's because God has not found a space in your understanding that accommodates his agenda. Please listen to me. The Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power. So when it looks like God is withdrawing, it's an act of his mercy. Because that barrenness in understanding will affect you when you are blessed with certain resources and influence. The only thing that gives it value is this knowledge. So you sit in a position where with one signature you can help a thousand believers. But because you do not have this understanding, you don't know what to do with this vast influence. And Satan will come to suggest and tell you there is a way. Influence is useless when understanding is unfruitful. Let's define influence. We know what evangelism is. Let me give you my definition of influence. Influence, as I define it, is the ability to make men buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty. The compelling power that makes men to buy into your convictions. You force them to believe what you believe without using cruelty influence now if you this is a dangerous message for the kingdom of darkness believe me this is it that's the secret influence if i can make a territory buy into my ideology which is a reflection of the ideology of the kingdom then in one day a nation can be saved now watch this Influence is very powerful because at every point it, they define civilization. They define right and wrong. They define their mind control systems. Let's go back to Micah's prophecy. You see how difficult it is to walk this thing. Micah says it shall come to pass in the last days that the influence of the church will begin to rise. Now you understand what he's saying? The influence. Something will happen to that weak church that looks like the rejected stone. And he says the influence, like a seed that has been thrown to the earth, 
suddenly it will look like the church is playing but you will see it in ever increasing measures and that a day will come listen now that people will begin to note and say look these guys are a force we cannot ignore and as a result gentiles will come that's influence it's one thing to call them come see a man but it's another thing for them to come he says shall you also go he said to whom shall we go joseph said oh king find a man who is discreet and wise and the king said who shall we find listen if you understand what I share with you today, you will step into dimensions. You see, the value of the anointing is that it comes upon the container of your understanding. The true potential of the anointing is seen when your understanding is fruitful. Are we, are we blessed now? Now, let's deal with this thing. We know, sociologically speaking, that this cosmos, this earth, popular concept that we all understand in the body of Christ there are what we know to be seven mountains are we together but then let me share with you something powerful about them seven mountains that control the entire activities of the human race to date the entire earth in terms of influence can be broken into seven mountains Should I say what I want to say? Yes. Will you believe it? Yes. Okay. Now, man is not tripartite. Just, just listen. Just absorb it and, and just listen carefully. There is no such concept as spirit stand here, soul stand here, body stand here. Th that is nonsense watch this listen i understand what people who purport this are trying to say man is spirit but because of the law of territory that any spirit that must function in the earth realm must sustain a material body made of the materials of that territory it's called the law of territory that's why we cannot live in the water indefinitely why because there is something about that that ecosystem are we together that we were not built for you fly but you don't live in the air if you fly excessively you have something called a jet lag it's a reminder that you were not designed to live on the air are we together now now <laughs> please listen to me man is spirit but a body had to be built for that spirit a body has thou prepared are we together the body hosts the spirit but there was a problem so here is spirit here is body there's no system of relating because they come from two different realms are we together so a medium was created that allows the duality of realms so that that entity can still relate with the realm he came from and still be effective in this realm hold on the name of that connector is called the mind the mind is a medium that's where we get the word media ah. so the assignment of the media is to connect intentions with experience pray in the spirit for one minute we, we have to ask god to help us this morning we want to work something seriously in this place the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah please sit down now so you understand my teaching the mind is the faculty that gives the intention of the spirit expression in the earth realm 
the body is merely an executor it does not have a will of its own that's why when you separate the spirit from the body we name that experience death not the cessation of life but now you have separated them and that body lies down there now this is very powerful so when you say this man is a pastor now if this man god forbid falls to the ground and dies you don't call the dead body a pastor so who was really the pastor are we together our society is shaped by these fears of influence seven of them let me name them quickly we have to save time please write this is very important number one there are concepts that are popular so i will use them and just 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 walk around them the first fear of influence call them mountains now it's called the mountain of religion write it down please this is the sphere that decides the spiritual conviction of a people within a territory that means that any territory you can know the quality of what is happening in this mountain by the spiritual convictions of the people within a territory if there is a prevalent error within a territory this is the mountain to blame someone is not doing his job well and is, is by so doing altering the convictions of the people wrongly are we together so when god calls you as a man of god this is the geography of your witness religion are we blessed let me tell you this watch this everybody believes in something don't mind the ignorance of people when they say i don't believe in anything not not believing in anything means you believe in yourself nebuchadnezzar put an idol of himself so he believed in himself when you believe in yourself as as against believing in god is still idolatry you should believe in yourself when you are motivating people but you can build an image of yourself and worship it you are still an idol worshiper it's just that you are worshiping yourself are we blessed the mountain of religion watch this if god is going to invade a land and birth dimensions of his grace and glory this is where he will come from when he was about to come to the earth he went to the priest zechariah he didn't go to the scribes he didn't go to the learned people he went here and said zechariah something is about to happen john is coming he will have to forerun the coming of jesus john wanted to mess him up zechariah and he shut his mouth zechariah became deaf and dumb not because god hated him he wanted to use priesthood to abort destiny and god said no we have to do something this man has an anointing upon him and if he speaks he will affect the climate he has dominion over the cosmos remember zechariah was the priest that was in charge of priesthood for that year so heaven recognized that office there was a throne that backed that office and god said let's help men by shutting this man's mouth so sometimes shutting your mouth is not wickedness is to be sure that what you are saying is right god may temporarily withdraw your influence and vet what you are about to communicate the content of your message when he finds it right the two leaf gates are open for you then the nations can now hear you are we blessed religion number two the mountain of family this is a very serious mountain every armed robber comes from a home hello every thief was born every troublemaker that harasses society was born every terrorist was born every apostle and great general was born family is very important this is the first revelation of the love of jesus family the bible begins with family and ends with family the most honorable name that god gives himself is father 
not even just lord abba he says when you pray to me i have many names but this is my most preferred name abba father abba does not mean one who has a child no you don't have to have a child to be father father means source sustainer defender when you call me abba you acknowledge that every other thing aside from me is only a channel i am the source somebody say my father the mountain of family we have to save marriages we have to save children most of the nonsense that happens in society starts here when a child does not experience love from the home he ships his anger to anywhere he finds himself and his entire lifetime will be spent on a revenge mission and if you happen to be the victim of his revenge then he can make your life miserable that person can become a politician tomorrow and hate people unnecessarily because subconsciously the anger from that background please don't say it does not matter some of the happiest people on earth today are either people who are uh, sociologically speaking people who come from good families i hope you know that a man and a woman are two dimensions of god he separated them so that god will use marriage to help men understand him the the primary listen the primary assignment of marriage is not just for having children a woman is a dimension of god a man is a dimension of God that separation was made so that man will understand the highest revelation of God in intimacy that is the reason why the Holy Ghost is also called what the woman is called helper you, you, you see that yes that means that you understand him when you understand women hallelujah please sit please sit please sit ladies you will make lunch for me this afternoon i mean watch this now please sit down let me tell you this now, now truly speaking i know we're laughing but but just just pay attention listen the mountain of family is very powerful the first sermon a child should have about God should come from the relationship between father, mother, daddy, mommy, not pastor. The first education of the child should not come from school. should come right here. And the way the Bible says is to train up a child. Hold on. How does a train move? Hold me. Do as I do. Don't just listen to me. This is how children are trained. Don't, don't, don't ask me to go and buy you cigarette and when I bring it, you now tell me if I catch you smoking, I will kill you. No, no, no. Children are not good listeners, but they are good imitators. Let me teach you how to train your child. You are saying, son, I want to show you about kingdom finances. This is my own money. This is your own, right? This, you're teaching your child now. And you're saying, now watch me. Father, thank you. One day that child will kneel down with you. You don't have to invite the child. Just do it sincerely and consistently. And that child will come to you one day. You will drive him, he will not go. Because you have become an influence. One day when he's alone and you travel, the Spirit of God will come you can the child can pray you can be praying around the house every night and laying hands on your children your wife and then one day your son will follow you too you'll say boy go and sleep and he will cry he's becoming a man of the spirit by following a man of the spirit listen when this place is correct it will reduce the work of pastors it will reduce the nuisance that all kinds of trouble and nonsense that men of God go through. What about teachers? The home. A place that should help. A place that should build. 
this is where you can look and say look son you are handsome daughter you are beautiful and i love you and she comes back and says daddy someone told me i'm not beautiful say don't mind that that blind gentleman i've i'm i'm your father and i know let me show you from scripture so that even when i'm not around that conviction remains true because if i just tell you the day i'm not there you will look for me everywhere but i need to i will start but i will direct you to the world that can outlive me listen i don't want to dwell here valentine is over already but watch this every man is threefold when you are speaking about family every man is a husband defines his relationship exclusively to his wife every man is father defines the jurisdiction of his responsibility every man is priest when you find a man that is not these three things run away there's no need saying god is here your will i'm answering you now run fast you don't have to be father when you have children the apex of fatherhood is responsibility then every woman is a wife a wife is not one who is married bible says, he that finds a wife meaning she has to be a wife before she's found <laughs> hallelujah now please listen listen a wife is a posture is a state there is an understanding you sustain that makes you a wife it has nothing to do with a man coming around you now listen please and then every woman is a mother the hallmark of motherhood is sacrifice any woman that has not yet sustained the fortitude for sacrifice is not a mother even if you have children and then like the man every woman is also priest or every woman is a priest when a proverbs 31 woman meets with a job 29 man they will make a psalm 112 home let's stop here family everybody say family number three the third mountain is education this is a very serious mountain because your concepts and ideas about life are foundationally built from here it matters the quality of our institutions you need to know what your child is hearing when you are not there don't say it does not matter children return back and ask parents questions they cannot sleep daddy what is this and he says how old are you daddy i'm seven who taught you no they didn't teach me i saw my teacher saying it or doing it we must trust god for the grace and the resources to build schools that are run by the value system of the kingdom Before the school resumes, the teachers do a vigil. Shalika Paruskiata. They lay hands on the report cards of the children. This is what we are talking about. That while the teacher is teaching, suddenly there is a student with all kinds of oppressions coming from a family. And the teacher does not say you are lazy and dull because the teacher is also a priest. And the teacher says young lady see me in my office i have noticed you don't do well and she says it's not my fault and says let me show you how it works in the kingdom there is a spirit in man now please don't think i'm just entertaining you whether you are interested or not god is up already doing it our schools where we teach our children values of honor diligence respect have you noticed how our teenagers resent God 
if we not, I want to say it respectfully I love the body of Christ I'm sent to the body but this where you family this right here was the mistake of the West when mighty things were happening in the 60s and the 70s some of our mothers and our fathers who continue to do great things around they ignored the children notice in the exodus of Israel the a negotiation came right. let the men go but leave and later it's okay let your children your children is your future you see why the miracle of that woman whose husband was a prophet and died the debtors what did they want to do with the children you are not successful if you are the only one who is successful until your children reflect your values you have failed believe me when i tell you this our teenagers you off the television they switch it on when people watch movies or television and they say it's rated 18 all that is just to make sure the law doesn't harass you but most people know where to find everything something is going seriously wrong otherwise one day like most teenagers and young people don't know what a typewriter is someone is going to say who is jesus say my jesus i don't know him what what do you mean your he's your jesus not our jesus say jesus i don't know him he's strange and there rose another pharaoh who knew not joseph but in the name of Jesus, there are people here who will be sent to this mountain to be the preservers of the heritage of knowledge with God involved. There were two trees in Eden. One was the tree that ministered life. The other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the Babylonian system. One of the most painful things for a parent is that after laboring for years, you watch your child become a complete opposite of your ideology. When you say Jesus, he says nonsense. When you say moral excellence, he says rubbish. When you say responsibility, he says, what does that mean? We will lose a generation if we ignore education. There are people today who can, I know it happens a lot in Africa. People just buy results. People just buy all kinds of things and they have absolutely nothing to deliver. They bribe their way from high school, primary school we call it, college and all through and there is absolutely nothing to deliver. This is a mountain. I'm showing you so that I will verify what you saw in your dream. The unusual passion for education is not carnality because we think spirituality is when you become a man of God on the pulpit I'm showing you now that this is also a minister so when you find out that the prophet who is called into the prophetic ministry is having an unusual urge to pray He's praying 16 hours. It's because of the design of his call. You find yourself having an excessive appetite for knowledge and books. You now feel bad because that man has defined his spiritual life as the template to measure spirituality. No, stay on your course with honor. You are growing to it. Is God blessing us? The next mountain, very quickly, number four, arts and entertainment. This is very powerful. This is the mountain that teaches us how to celebrate success. This is the mountain that shows us the end of where we want to go to. This is the mountain that provides inspiration through the results of others. When you watch a footballer or you watch a football team lift the trophy, you can sit back there and just imagine yourself inside a jersey and say look i'm coming to this mountain inspires in no small way but it is also dangerous because they can teach you to celebrate success in a way that extracts christ out of the equation 
musicians this is the mountain of celebrities and there's nothing wrong being a celebrity provided Christ will be represented there that's why I told you you need God before you get here the pressure here is serious ask any man who has tasted of honor and influence and they will tell you it's not as easy as we say it. I will say no to everybody well obtain grace eat because the journey is far hallelujah praise the Lord imagine if Michael Jackson never said Jesus he will save more souls than many crusades combined not because he believed what he said but just because he said it from a standpoint of influence you see the reason why every time Jesus met celebrities he did not ignore them he knew they had power he knew they had influence influence right here is powerful this is a place that shows you the the excellency of being valuable this is where value is celebrated if you are not valuable this is the schoolmaster that will teach you a lesson this is where the spotlight resides it will inspire you to be creative it will inspire you to be valuable and let me tell you there are people your assignment requires you being a celebrity it is not from a carnal standpoint so while you are becoming that award-winning TV hostess and that musician, people think you are just, no, you are still a priest in disguise. It's like a terrorist group. You are a doctor, but you are a terrorist. You are a celebrity, but at the back of it, you are a dangerous prophet. So people just know that you are the TV hostess and people love you. You are piling awards. And when the kings come to your house and say, how do you do it? You look at them and you tell them, listen, a man can receive nothing. Do you think they will listen to you? Absolutely they will. If results were cheap, everyone will have it. Results are loudspeakers. Is God helping us? I have to rush. So you must trust God. And we're going to pray and in this conference there will be graces released upon people listen I made up my mind that I would never lead a people who are just spiritual alone there must be people who by the grace of God will be gatekeepers of strategic spaces of influence right here the next mountain this one is one that you should respect It's called the mountain of media comes from the word medium they are real mediators they create imagery they define your convictions you only know what you are told Genesis 3 and the Lord had the, the the Bible says and Adam had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day and when he met Adam look at me he said Adam where art thou and Adam said I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked next question who told you you have you have outsourced an information from a media that is not me the media is powerful where is media you mind control systems that's why advertisement they spend billions of dollars please talk to me your business people many of you the advertising industry for two minutes during Olympic or World Cup or any of the football international football or whatever it is for two minutes people pay millions of dollars do you know why because the media someone may want you to now begin to buy this water and then they call a celebrity to drink it and then he drinks it in a way and manner that makes you hate the one you now have in your fridge. Now, you don't know that that hatred has been planted till you go to drink it. You look at it and say, no, no, I shouldn't, I... Media. There is something they can do to God here that will make you hate God. There is something they can do to church here that will make you hate church. There is something they can tell you from here that will make you hate the Bible. It is within their power to 
paint any picture, the media is powerful. The media can make you in five minutes to hate your wife by telling you a story and it will paint it in a way these people are masters of psychology. You look at your wife and say from today, we don't stay in the same room again. Say, well, honey, we've been married for 20 years. But someone can hijack this media and make a man who was about to run away from his wife come back and say, honey, you know what? After 20 years, it still looks like yesterday. The media, mind control system. Please understand what I tell you. Africa. This is what has destroyed us. Somebody told us something that we are weak. Somebody told us something that we are not strong. Somebody told us something. Now I love the body of Christ. But listen to what I tell you. Be careful what you hear. I heard of a story. A real story of someone who was trying to climb achieve an impossible feat he was climbing a very tall palm tree and when he started climbing people were stopping him and say hey don't climb you will fall down and the man kept climbing he was looking at them they were clapping their hands and saying no and he was laughing at them and he kept climbing and at a point they kept quiet when he arrived there they were all clapping and they found out that the man was deaf so his interpretation of their criticizing him was an applaud there was a media system that sponsored his growth if that man were not deaf he would never attain that height someone told you you are not beautiful that you will need to turn stones to be bred to be approved Whereas he already said you are the beloved son. Someone told you. We are victims of what we were told. But the Bible says let this mind. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. There is a mentality. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. He says having their understanding darkened. It has been alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. When God wants to save a man, he will introduce you to media. The greatest is a compendium of the thoughts of God. We call it the word of God, the logos of God. Please look at me. He says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture. That is able to make you wise even unto salvation. This is it. I found your word and I did eat it. It became a joy and a rejoicing. This is the media that changed my life. Vetoed my background. Mm. I guarantee you. Expose yourself to this. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life. Not to everybody. To those who find them. And health to their flesh. When God wants to motivate you. He will bring a screen before you. You can call it a vision. You can call it a dream. He shows you tomorrow. While you are not yet there. So that all the vicissitudes of life that frustrate you in your today, suddenly there is a media that flashes you. Joseph, do not mind the pit. It is the throne you saw. When Joseph was in the pit, even in the pit he remembered, I saw the sun, I saw the moon, I saw 11 stars. Capacity. Please culture what you listen to. Please culture what you hear. There is a generation depending on your transformation. I am ever aware that everything I expose myself to endangers a generation or blesses that generation. And for the sake of that generation, 
since God has brought me to a point where my words are received by a generation I owe that generation the purity of spiritual communication and so I discipline myself why because the content that we feed our generation will make them do you like what I'm teaching isn't it amazing that we've not even talked about money and yet this is how to be rich you make money of understanding these are the systems that coordinate your understanding then you will lay up wealth gold as dust the mountain are we still there this mountain is important the mountain of politics and governance watch this please look at me the mountain of politics and governance south africa look at me africa hear me it was daniel in babylon that taught us the excellency of finding god's advocates in government daniel is a very interesting personality he came as a slave and then the Bible says by the excellency of the Spirit of God at work in him, he was exalted to positions that gave him the ability to represent the purposes of God. Daniel begins to pray and because of his prayer, the controlling power of the Persians, the spirits around Medo-Persia that was manipulating the activities within that sociological sphere could not work because an advocate was in government. And a house of parliament came together by the influence of spirits but they used laws to express those influence and said for 30 days king nebuchadnezzar let us pass a law they didn't say we want to attack daniel they said let us pass a law no one imagine what happens to a territory for 30 days when men don't pray a law for only and they came to catch daniel and could not find anything at all except as touching the matter of his god now watch this daniel opened the gate and continued to pray as his custom was and the bible says one time they came and caught him when they caught daniel now daniel is supposed to be in trouble hallelujah and because of the excellent spirit even the king was touched daniel why did you do this you would have just obeyed the law they throw Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel shows them, I'm not only a member of parliament. There is something about me you do not know. You threw a member of parliament, but now watch a kingdom citizen. Many people focus on the lion. They forget Daniel. He was not passing any law there. He was showing them the excellency of the graces that were upon him hey when i wear that suit do not make a mistake i'm not only passing laws i am an advocate i stand to promote the interests of a government and let me speak to someone here may the grace that makes for government rest upon you in the name of jesus christ i'm prophesying to people here who have had dreams you know you are to be in the parliament in south africa don't let no man keep you down it may take time but climb that ladder with grace and intelligence and you sit there and represent the interest of the christ listen now government hear me one policy can shut the interest of God within a territory. Not two, not three. I can be as anointed as I am. But if one law is passed with all the anointing, with all the prophecies, with all the miracle grace, one policy. But there has to be someone there who will sit down and you look at yourselves there it doesn't matter what party you know that all those things are just mediums for expression and you stand what is this decision about and you go back to the holy ghost 
and you come back okay i found the idea do a b c and heaven says thank you you have preserved the next 30 years of south africa just by being a correct parliamentarian please pay attention to government it matters christ must be represented here this is where jezebel sits when jezebel comes she wants government she wants to marry whoever is the king jezebel is an interesting wife she doesn't just marry any man are you a king no i'm not interested in you where are you herod where are you ahab jezebel marries the kings so that she can use the throne to fight elijah He's able to do just what he says he will do over your life. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he South Africa, the final mountain. This is where the king of Tyre himself sits. Mm. Look up. This is the mountain of business and finance. This is where the king of Tyre, the old serpent, he sits here by himself. Not Jezebel now. Himself. Because this is the mountain that forms and controls all over mountains. Please listen to me. The mountain of finance is not about money. The mountain of finance is about control. We live in a civilization that is economically driven. Let me show you two scriptures that will bless you. Ready? Proverbs 20, I think it should be. Proverbs chapter 20. Ooh. Ooh. 22. Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7. Proverbs 22. Read with me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ready? One to read. Uh huh. One more time. Just keep verse two. Keep verse two, media. Now look at that very serious statement. The rich and the poor meet together. He says, The Lord is the maker of them all. Why didn't he just say, The Lord has made all the inhabitants? The Lord never made them so. He made them all, but they separated themselves and gave themselves a definition called rich, poor. Please look at me. The battle for prosperity is not a battle for carnal recognition. The battle for prosperity is the battle to redeem time. Please look at me. I need to explain this to you. The, the apex of dominion is dominion over time. Please listen to me. The unit of destiny is time. Whatever eats your time destroys your destiny. Are we together now? It takes time to love God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to build your relationship with your wife and husband. It takes time to know your children. It takes time to sit down and think well and live a useful life. Everybody shout time. One more time, shout time. So this is the foundation of the teaching on this mountain. Time redemption. That whatever takes your time, is taking your destiny do we agree so 
the battle for prosperity is the battle for time redemption is the battle for efficiency it's not just the battle for cars houses estates and names no those are very inferior motivations the battle for time so satan in exploring the cosmos found out he had to find where man's time goes to and he found out that our time goes to making ends meet and he says that's it i got it i got it now since your time is committed to making sure that you have the resources that make you alive and strong let me do something to your time and where you spend it so that you will now be so distracted and not have the time to serve the purposes of God watch this when the name do you know one of in Israel and in, in Egypt when the nation of Israel went to Egypt they were being given straw straw for their building is that true and then the time they had left they would tell Moses go and advocate our exodus the time has come for us to go when that message got to Pharaoh hear what Pharaoh said is it not because you have time we are giving them straw so the little time they have they can call upon God he says stop giving them straw so that the time they have left they will focus on getting straw oh you still have time to come to church in the morning let's do something to the economy you still have time to arrive home by nine and pray with your family let's do something to your life you still have time to pray for one hour with your wife no do something to your time the battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption please listen to me it takes time to truly love God now I always give this example let's assume this gentleman is say 50 years you get born again at age 40 do you know that's already a disadvantage thank God you've met Christ now but you get born again at age 40 the time it will take to receive the Holy Ghost argue about your philosophies versus the word of God and then later now agree it's going to take time to understand the things of the kingdom by that time you are 50 or 55 now you now learn the laws of wealth and all of these principles you are about to build your first house at 60 now I'm, I'm not don't feel bad it's not a testimony now hold on 40 years spiritually speaking is behind you there has to be a way of redeeming time and the bible says and i will restore the years god's concern please sit down we're almost there so what you really lost was not money what you really lost was not business what you really lost was not relationship what makes you really cry is time time give me time and anything left can come back give me time and i can rise again give me time and i can learn again but the challenge is that when time goes it does not return god does not restore time just by taking you backward he takes what is backward and makes it to wait for you please hear me let me act out something i always act out and may this be a prophecy for someone please come my friend watch this everyone these two people start their journey in destiny born the same day at the same time right both of you will move slowly and then you stop somewhere now this guy starts his journey through life and a delay happens to him everybody say delay. delay this is his colleague making progress in life and there he is standing there keep moving now you start coming 
that's not restoration that's progress because he's still behind the Holy Ghost has to pick you and bring you listen so that when I check the equation of your life I don't see the gap the lag it's no longer there watch this so a woman is being barren for 10 years even if she has a child that's not restoration that's progress so God gives her triplets in nine months it's not about three children it's about taking 10 years and putting it in nine months listen these are the systems of advantage that are in the kingdom everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged you are mandated through spiritual intelligence to now outsource these systems and begin to introduce them to your destiny space are we blessed now here we are before we pray and blow the roof off let me just establish this I tell you why God wants you to prosper he wants you to prosper so that you can gain time that a day can come I can come to your house on a Tuesday morning and all I see you doing is that you're on your knees with your wife saying today is a time off to worship God and they say you want to die of hunger you say no there is a system put in place the faithfulness of God I can pay for my time look up this is a hundred dollar bill this thing right here you see has relocated people out of the will of God please look up this has made people to marry people they have no business marrying and you say it does not have a voice and you say it's weak this little note right here has made people betray friends this thing right here has made people to get into diabolic things that should not be please look up this thing right here has made others die and go to hell because the opportunity to get the gospel to them could not get this thing here has broken homes this thing here has made children who would have been presidents right now to just be pushing trucks and trolleys around the road because they could not be educated if you do not have this you are really disadvantaged now please listen now you understand my perspective so when we talk about and this is the challenge with the prosperity message as it were respectfully speaking the the object behind it and the motivation is not just a flamboyant life just to satisfy flesh there is a bigger and nobler agenda we are talking of kingdom come listen I left home over a week ago I'm only going to be back home by the end of the month and I'm only able to do that because all things are well at home I won't lie to you here are we together if all things are not well at home the concentration to stay with the spirit and produce the revelations that bless the nations will not be there there's no point telling lies we're not acting the body of Jesus is hanging on the cross and a prayer warrior's prayer could not bring it down the salvation of man is at the expense of this mountain and a man who had the influence goes to the king and says king I have a grave don't worry just give me the body and that body do you know there are certain revelations you cannot have when you are poor because there is nothing you can do about it now listen the spirit of God that would bring deliverance for Israel was going around Egypt and everybody who could see visions was poor including Joseph so he had to make do with a king 
because if if someone in the camp of Israel saw the vision, will he go and tell Pharaoh and say, I, I saw four cat, seven cattle eating the lean ones. They say, please go back and walk. You are just stressed. Give him a day off. But listen, when God wants his will to be done, he will make sure that will is received by men of influence. I'm recalibrating your understanding about the message of prosperity. Let me tell you why I hate poverty. I don't hate poverty just because I want to feel rich. I hate poverty because of its effect in kingdom advance. If poverty were neutral to the gospel, neutral to the purposes of God, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But I found out through experience and through the word that lack of resources is terrible. It's worse than sickness. Yeah, you can be sick and not have the appetite to eat, but you can be poor and all the malls are open and you are still watching. And your children are watching. Listen to me. There are many books today that should go around the world, encounters with truths that can bless nations, but this is what limited it. Not the government, not a policy. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Many cheap victories that would have been won. Money complicated the destinies of people, the lack of it. And I made up my mind, I said, Lord, I don't want to stand as a man of God on stage and begin to manipulate people. And so you must show me the systems. Now, please watch this. In 2007, I had a vision had an encounter with a great man of God in that vision and then apostle I was led into a room please listen carefully when I entered that room I saw several currencies of several nations until then I didn't pay attention to anything finance it was just encounters Holy Spirit purpose kingdom fire miracles and that's wonderful but god was introducing me to a new dimension of the kingdom so that it would bring balance and efficiency to my life and now i entered that room please listen to me and when i saw that i was asked to pick and the interesting thing was the loss you would have for money under that condition ah let me pack everything no no at all i was totally not connected to it I just picked a few of the bundles and I was done. One of the few times in my life that I had the audible voice of God, I had four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. I didn't understand what I heard. Lord, what is the meaning of this? Many years ago, we went for a crusade somewhere and it was a mighty crusade with signs and wonders but i could not pay the bills for the sound people as anointed as i was they had given me time if you do not pay these bills we may get people and go and lock you up did i steal no this thing wanted to put me in prison please listen to me listen for your children Listen for tomorrow. Listen for the gospel. Listen for the sake of his majesty. South Africa, hear me. I bring you a message. It is more than business. It is more than buying and selling. This is a battle for preserving time, for efficiency. Whoever has this will sit on the throne. You cannot remain in the corridors of power without this. There's no point arguing it. It is true. Zechariah chapter 1. We're going to pray. I apologize. I know I've taken a little time, but just, just give me a few minutes to tie this up.
or let's do Haggai Haggai 1 and verse 8 let's do Haggai well done guys I'll soon release you thank you Haggai 1 and verse 8 now read with me believers go up to the mountain it's not a suggestion go up the mountain is an instruction do something on that mountain if you do it well you will come down with wood what is this made out of the prophet could not see money so he was saying what he saw then he said whatever I see you coming down with is made of wood go up the mountain you don't get wood on the mountain you get wood in a forest but this kind of wood you get it on a mountain enter that system do something an interaction in that system will grant you access to wood when you come down build the house give me space give me time and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Harus kali brandi kapashu brahasine balata Cry yet saying Thus saith the Lord My cities through prosperity Shall be spread abroad And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion And choose Jerusalem the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to keep it high. If we want the nations in reality, listen, there is only so much you can do for yourself in terms of your personal comfort. No matter how loud you are, there is only a limit. We are talking of the resources that will save nations in a day. There are three reasons why God blesses us. And please, if you are a man of God here and a business person, now please sit down. Sit down. Can you spare me 10 more minutes or so? Please. Please be patient with me. God brought me here to just walk. We want, I told you there are doors that we must close once and for all. There are three reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Please understand this. Number one, he blesses us to live a comfortable life. Number two, he blesses us so that we can provide the resources that makes for kingdom advance kingdom advance is not just a call that they make in church and say so this so a thousand rand a million rand is part and parcel of the responsibility of believers it's just that how we've gone about it is what makes it look like it's some crookish thing in islam and other religions they know it's a foundational teaching that part of your kingdom responsibility is to make resources available for kingdom advance. Not by manipulation, by revelation. And the third reason why God blesses us in this kingdom is to be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. These are the only three reasons why God blesses us in this kingdom. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Let me tell you, poverty is evil. Just find a way of believing I'm not lying to you. Poverty is evil. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Are we together? So the Lord wants to empower me so I can be an extension of his glory across the earth. He wants to empower me so that I can contribute to the lifting of the name, to lifting the name of Jesus even in South Africa. That when the name of Jesus is going down, we stand and say, no way. The name of Jesus continues to be lifted high. Three revelations that represent the foundation for wealth. This is the mountain that concerns many people all over the world people worry and stress now young people who are in early 20s 
collapse because of high blood pressure who are they taking care of you see people talking to themselves and driving till they bash a tree they they they, they did not even see that they were alone you, you, you see if we don't if we don't do something about this we are going to lose people someone gets up and sits on his bed with the bills in front of him takes a deep breath and that's it he's gone but the bill is still there so someone is going to inherit it remember uh, uh, um, uh, second kings now that's why some people cry when others die it's not just that they are missing of course yes thank god in all fairness they are going but then what they are leaving behind now these are very real issues let me tell you very real issues please write this down foundational revelations that we must have you want to take charge of Tyre and Sidon the marketplaces of the earth number one all wealth comes from God all wealth are you tired guys I will soon release you also. you've been sitting there standing I think I have to pray for you I mean you can't be standing here for nothing now write this down please all wealth comes from God do you know what that means that God is Abba everybody say Abba Abba means source that means every other thing including your business is only a channel the moment your business or your job becomes your source you are finished so all wealth and all blessings come from God that's number one then in addition look at me please all blessings come from God through men to men this is the second revelation you must have nothing really comes from God to you it comes from God through men to men hallelujah who is into cloth in here seated here I'm seeing an anointing on you my brother this man wearing suit stand up I don't know you but this man is going far I don't know him all but I'm what I'm seeing in the spirit there is a mighty anointing mighty anointing that is coming on you for it is is a true grace for wealth but then you would dress kings believe me when I tell you this you will dress kings you will dress nobles god will connect you to great men of god across many spheres and you will experience the ministry of the holy ghost in unusual dimensions he will bring you ideas creative ideas of the spirit i release that grace upon you right now take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ Let's finish up. Where was I? All blessings. Now, imagine that gentleman. It's not just that it's today God wanted to say that to him. Listen, listen, listen. The day you find the man sent to you is the day God has come to you. If your pastor refuse to put this program what you saw in your dream will still not happen even though God already said it please there are certain things you have to this is the world of men don't say it's only God no 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 God tells David you are king Samuel says no the answer is no David is left in the wilderness and God does not bypass him to say you are wasting my time he comes to plead with a man and say please how long shall you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king carry the horn don't waste this man's time men can define the destinies of others now this is not in some manipulative way but it is true God blesses men through men one man's signature can open gates over your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you 
oh esther who likes you oh ruth who likes you hallelujah please don't miss tonight i have to stop here let me reserve what else i have to share for tonight listen to me all wealth comes from God it comes through men to men I've spoken about everywhere here you may not be called into these various places but this one concerns you for sure it is your business hallelujah Tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you principles. Now, I know that seated here are business veterans, your pastor being one of them. Many of you here are doing well, and I don't mean to insult your pedigree and make it look as though you do not understand your art. But let me tell you, there are superior dimensions in the spirit. Let me round up by teaching you three levels of wealth. There are seven dimensions of prosperity the Lord revealed to me that will come to the body of Christ before Christ returns. We are only in the third dimension now. The first level of wealth is called transactional wealth. This is the level where you receive financial rewards among many other rewards for packaging your value turning it into products and services, serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. You call that business. Are we together? So you are paid in exchange for your time and the value that you provide. That is a level. The limitation is that the price attached to it is fixed. If you are a billionaire, and this bottle of water is how many how, how much is this say six rands you are not going to pay a million rands for this even though you have it because it is valuable but not that scarce are we together the second level of wealth is called transformational wealth here you do not sell your value you dispense it freely you change lives and then they are mandated according to the reward system of the kingdom to bless you as an expression of their perception of your value that is why a man of God may not charge you money he will still bless you you may never even know him but God's reward system mandates that one day according to his system of justice he will be blessed for what he has done the power of transformational wealth is that you are blessed based on the perception of how valuable you are in the eyes of the giver so someone can give your man of God a hundred rands and another will say you blessed me so much you changed my life here's a million rands so in one day you can quantum leap into dimensions now the second level is very difficult because you will be a fool for many years people will take you for granted you will give and pour yourself into people many people will trivialize your impact but the bible never said you will reap where you sowed he said you will reap what you sowed you can sow in south africa and reap in the u.s the earth is a soil any location authorized by God can bring you a harvest so if all you do is business and you are not changing lives you will be slow listen one man's thank you can be your profit for 10 years you must explore all the avenues that fast track your financial growth you can sell your value and have a snail like movement for many decades and yet one person can look at you and say apostle thank you you organize the excel conference thank you 
to your dear wife, would you want me to override the checks for this conference for the next 10 years? Transformational wealth. The third value of wealth, the third level of wealth is the highest as revealed of the three is called sovereign wealth wealth by the finger of God the power of the prophetic Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 listen to me it is true that the prophetic can bless And the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel through the prophesying. Not through blocks and cement. They built and finished through the prophesying. Let me tell you this. The prophetic has been abused and manipulated in many circles in Africa, respectfully speaking. And I speak as one who is part of the body of Christ. I never speak against the body of Christ. I am part of it. I speak with all honor. But it is true that there's been a lot of imbalances and exaggerations and abuses here and there. But the prophetic still works. It can change a man's life overnight. Let me tell you how the prophetic works. Realities in the realm of the spirit all exist. What you call creation is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit. What we call in this realm creation is simply a system that transports spiritual realities from a realm and a domain that is more than the three-dimensional realm. Listen, that means the favor on your life already exists. In the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that God had blessed us with all blessings, spiritual blessings, but they reside in the heavenly places and are routed through the office of the Christ. This was Paul's doctrine to the church in Ephesus. Are we together now? And now the Bible says, listen carefully, that because those things are in the spirit, they exist. The assignment of the prophetic is to give them dates and make them appear. to appoint unto them that mourn you can make a man's next year become tomorrow that, that's the prophetic please believe what i'm telling you in the land of samaria women were eating their future because that's what happens when people are stressed they eat their future they eat their capital they eat their children suddenly news gets to elisha and he stands under the influence of the spirit and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened he was making something that already existed in the realm of the spirit listen everything you are looking for is also looking for you the prophetic accelerates your connection yes the job you seek is finding you too the lifting you seek is finding you too but it can come at a slow rate that your lifetime may not accommodate. So the prophetic, with one word, truly inspired of the Spirit. Four lepers. The prophetic. Once the prophetic word is uttered, is uttered the Spirit of wisdom begins to hover around the horizon to look for the physical actors that will make that prophecy come to pass. There is a science to prophecy. It can be understood. So when I speak over your life, I'm not just speaking over your life by the Spirit. I am calling what must enter your life within the time allocated to make that word not look like a lie. So if it takes favor to make sure that word does not fall, See, the word of God is a tray, it's a messenger. It returns to God as proof that what was on it was delivered. The word of God is a tray. It carries favor, it carries healing, it carries blessings. So if I send you, you hold this and you bring it to me. If I see you returning back with an empty saucer, it's proof that what was on it reached me. So the word of God returns to him as proof that it got to the receiver so that he will send it again 
there is the spoken word but there is the sent word the sent word is a messenger that does not fail mobile telecommunication systems is an attempt to explain how the word of god works there are 7.2 billion people on earth but i can type a text right now and send it to you it will meet a billion waves there but it will push them till it gets to your phone and that that text is quick and powerful is so sharp it can cut every other network it's an attempt to explain the word of god so that when words come you don't just say amen but you understand what should be happening if i declare and i say may your destiny help us find you you don't just say amen you expect them immediately as you walk out of here and someone says sorry i remember my wrong since 2017 i should have reached you you are now not surprised because you now know prophecy is at work we're going to pray listen these are the systems of the kingdom that make men dominion is a resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom the weightiness the vastness and the accuracy of the spiritual information that you sustain is what defines your possibilities in this kingdom hallelujah when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was all you made us And we're standing here. Hear me. I am a product of many anointings. I'm a product of many graces. I have partaken of the investment that is upon the body of Christ. The Lord wants to supply for us the grace. I know we have the grand the, the the evening session tonight and i apologize for taking our time but i just want to wrap up this time we'll have the time to pray for people again in the evening we may not have the time to do that but i came here with a burden this morning and this afternoon i want you to taste of a dimension of the grace and the power of god that is truly able to shift men You see the Bible says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved this, this is not some nonsense and rubbish just, just around to manipulate your mind when the Lord Jesus appeared to me I would share more on my encounter hopefully maybe by night he stretched forth his hand towards me and a light came how I did not die is a mystery please listen to me it was like taking the Sun and putting it inside an ant and in another vision as I would have the Lord spoke to me and said my son on this day I give you my presence as a gift and I saw an angel of the Lord that stands by me and he said he will walk with you and I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence and then in another encounter the Lord gave me An instruction he said every nation and every territory I will send you to there must be someone in that nation that the light that came from me to you that light must find someone within that nation I want to pray for you 
it is the light that produces the miracles just help me with the symbol thank you Come on. we're around you i apologize if in any way i sound arrogant no this is not it's not in any way the boasting of the flesh we stand as ordinary people who have been helped by the spirit we are not ashamed to declare a limitation outside of his influence but please hear me in the next five minutes if you can believe what will happen to you you will marvel and wonder at the immutability the forcefulness of the power and the grace of God please lift your voice in one minute and declare enough is enough I'm tired of this level in the spirit please someone pray you're a man of god it's time to pray there are people that pray in this church south africa pray financially take me to another dimension shift my ministry to another dimension my business hallelujah please listen every blessed man knows that you prosper based on your backing from the realm of the spirit james chapter 2 and verse 26 apostle james was teaching on faith and works and he veered off and borrowed a kingdom concept he says for as the body without a spirit is dead you kill the body of anything by taking its spirit component away from it and you give life to everybody your business is a body where is the spirit that backs it your job is a body where is the spirit that backs it because james said when all you have is a body without the spirit component that backs it it is dead your church is a body where is the spirit component that backs it it is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the lord's doing i want to shift you from being ordinary Men of God, it's time for us to rise to supernatural dimensions of power. Apostles and prophets and teachers, business people, it's time for you to rise by a mystery men cannot understand. By what force does your business move forward? How come you attract clients from all over the world? It is by the Spirit. hallelujah now listen our time is gone just two prayers i want to release the grace for speed please hear me the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel when speed is on you you can start from anywhere to anywhere listen as i pray for you the power of god will come on you many of you will start running physically please help them and bring them so they don't injure themselves whether you are an usher or not i stand in the name of jesus and i decree and declare house of treasures south africa take the grace for speed take that grace now take that grace now help them take that grace now help them please speed i take away delay by the spirit of god i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i shift you in ministry i shift you in business speed speed help them help them help them speed hold them 
so they don't injure themselves they are not running on their own please hold them speed kaparata shikata speed hold them please hold that lady please let her not injure herself please whether you are an usher or not hold them anyone running around so that they don't injure themselves i shift you again i'm praying take that grace take that grace take that grace take that grace in business take that grace in ministry take that grace i bring you the power of the holy ghost upon your life ideas quick understanding time to pray for you take that grace take that grace Last prayer, Acts chapter 12. The influence has a gate. Acts chapter 12. We're rounding up. Please look up. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the Jews. Quickly please, verse 2. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. 3. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also next verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him where remember the purpose was to shut his influence so he kept him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people 5 Peter was therefore kept in prison but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him now watch what is about to happen to someone and Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with hands and chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison next verse hallelujah and behold look up I want to show you how doors open that bring a man to a realm of influence the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison where did the light start shining the light comes to you in prison first and then he smote Peter by the side saying raise him up arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands the chains had fallen but he was still in prison follow the progression next verse the angel said to him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 now watch this he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision verse 10 is where the mystery is watch this and when they were past the first gate the prison had three gates the first gate brings you out of that place of dungeon then he went to the second gate you are out but you are not yet in the city you are not in the prison but you are not in the city either and then he came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate take note immediately he said this is the gate that leads to where the city there is a gate that leads to the city for your business for your products and he said he opened the gates and he went out when that gate opens the next thing you see is the city influence this is the gate that grants you access to the hear ye him anointing there is a grace that makes a generation hear you just because you have something to sell 
or something to say does not mean people will come to reward your value he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder can I pray that prayer for you in the name of Jesus house of treasures South Africa business people politicians men and women of God I stand by the rod of the prophetic and the apostolic and I speak to the gate that must be open for your influence Ephata, be open be open for your business be open for ministry be open in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah apostle please can you come up just for a moment now watch this I want to do something that I usually do not do please listen to me I know that the concept of seeds and sowing and giving unfortunately but respectfully has been so abused in the body of Christ it's not because people are greedy it's just because respectfully speaking we men of God have not demonstrated the kind of integrity that may make people to freely give that is the truth it's not that people are greedy and we take responsibility as men of God we are men of God but we are also students in the school of the spirit and we must not be ashamed to learn and to adjust if and when the need arises That's right. hallelujah but I will tell you this I love you too much to not communicate to you the whole counsel of God I know that there are people who have been manipulated I know that there are people who have been all kinds of things have happened but listen to me I want you right now and in the evening you're going to stay with God and agree with God on a sacrifice that you're going to connect with in this meeting now please if you don't believe what I'm saying no problem at all there is no pressure whatsoever on you I fear God and I serve him with my heart God has made me by his grace a man of integrity even on this wise I would not come from Nigeria to come and deceive you no I fear God I plan to last in ministry but let me tell you I will I will not lie to you and deceive you because of fear of being misunderstood the Bible says let God be true and all men a liar all men liars hallelujah praise God as I'm standing here I'm standing with my own seat too okay no no when I give I don't take again God bless you for you and them watch this listen men of God you don't make money off members you make money off your obedience your obedience to the truth that is written if you are not a practitioner of what you teach you will be a victim of what you teach it is true I cannot be talking of sowing and giving and then I stand back myself no God honors his word you don't obey it it will not work Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command thee this day then the Lord all of these blessings shall come upon you you know the Lord shall exalt you you will be above all the nations of the earth I believe this I want to challenge everyone where do these seeds go to they don't go to heaven they are right here on earth they will be counted right here and be used I think um, a pastor was whispering to me that the, the God blessed them with a property they're about to acquire something like that wonderful so there's no need playing games and lying as if the money will evaporate and enter heaven no 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 right after the service it's going to be counted and it will be used for kingdom advance but the Bible says there is a mystery that when you give on earth you stand there is a Melchizedek that also stands in heaven concurrently as that is happening there is a spiritual transaction and Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth hallelujah I want to challenge you 
you're here and God has already put it in your heart. You have the seed you can sow. Some of you may need time to just go back home, think through with your wives, your families. Let it be a sacrifice that you are bringing. You're saying, Apostle, I believe. Please do not bring anything if you don't believe this. There's no point bringing anything and acting as though it was a manipulation. I say that because I believe that we're enlightened believers. We're believers who have understanding. And I'm speaking to people from other nations too. I'm sure that there should be a way of connecting into this. That, that, that's true. So um, by evening, I'm going to be praying here. And please do not miss the evening. I want to share something very powerful. And then will make it a miracle service, will have the opportunity to pray and it will also be an impartation that people will come and just receive something solid. Look, if it's not on you, it's not on you, period. There's, there's no need hoping and wishing. If favor is not on you, it's not on you. If, if the grace for healing is not on you, it's not on you. If the grace for wealth and prosperity is not on you, it's not on you. Right. I am very, very, I'm not ashamed of the graces I do not have. I seek them with honor. I seek them with humility. That's right. Praise the Lord. Tonight, God will be making all grace abound towards us. Hallelujah. I asked your apostle to stand in honor because he is the man of God over this place. I want to pray for you. And um, when I pray for you, I'm going to give a minute before I, you know, you just wrap up the service. If you have your seed, your, I'm not just saying something you put in your pocket and come to give. I wish I had time. I would have told you my experiences and, and seeds that I have had to release to shift my life into several dimensions. This is not in any way, I will repeat, to manipulate resources from your hand. But this is true. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. You can open the tulip gates over your life and your business right here in South Africa. That's right. I believe that if I challenge people to sow and they sow and nothing happens, I should return their money because it's nonsense. I told you I prayed a prayer and I told God, I said, may I never meet with people twice to change their lives. No. Father, we stand before you because we believe you are true. You have revealed to us the cosmos and your end time agenda, your desire to see to it that the Christ be revealed and be glorified in and through our lives. You have shown us the places that we occupy in destiny and you have shown us the value of accessing the resources of heaven. Lord, we want to be an uncompromising generation, a generation that reflects Christ truly, a generation that conquers the cosmos in experience. And one of our desires is that you shift us financially. Lord, I stand with Apostle Felix in agreement that as we commit ourselves to this sacrifice even by the Spirit, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, shift us to levels unimagined. For some of you, may this be what will shift your ministry. You will quantum leap to a strange dimension of supplies. For some of you, may this be the seed that takes your business global. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. And I decree and declare I give your seed a voice in the realm of the spirit. I command it, go around South Africa, gather your kind, return to the givers a thousandfold. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Men of God, don't go yet. Before you go, please, let's put our hands together for the Lord. When you read the scripture that the church prayed and Peter, an angel of the Lord was dispatched to Peter. I just felt this urge that we'll pray for my wife for the perfection of her health. Amen. God gave me this woman 20 years ago and I value her so much. I made a vow to God that as long as she's alive from the day we got married, no woman will see my nakedness. And I've honored it for 20 years. And, and I want you to pray for her earnestly. I told God I don't want another woman. I want this woman. I said it several times to God. 
and I believe that with the graces that are here today we can join forces to chase the Bible says one we chase a thousand and two we put ten thousand to flight and I believe that there are so many graces here and and it just came into my spirit that we should take advantage of this moment and just pray for her praise the Lord you know I, I had intended to pray um, in the office but since you have said it we're going to pray listen there's nothing to hide you know it's 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 not an embarrassment for the world to know we are men they should just know we are men helped by God praise the Lord so that a man of God's wife or a man of God has a health challenge please come and and um, um, it should not be a, a thing of discussion that we talk about as though it should be a thing of honor for us to cry to see to it that the power and the glory of God comes upon it you see this precious woman of God they've taken care of me so greatly and um, he we, we had breakfast yesterday and I, I watched him and his wife I saw the passion the honor the regard listen death is a spirit it can hear it can move away from you that's right can I request the precious woman of God please come you made a way please help your wife you made a way listen this is why he gave unto some please help her she's under the anointing I have seen miracles in my life believe me when I tell you this I am a miracle myself many years ago I was diagnosed with a fungal infection that ate my head literally hair was not supposed to grow on my head again there was nothing I didn't go through they cultured my head see the Bible says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope the thing I know about God is that when you conquer a realm authority is given to you to bring others out of that realm too. hallelujah we're not going to keep us standing here but let me tell you this scripture says I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord South Africa house of treasures stretch your hand to the angels over this house and let us speak I will request every great servant of God you can stretch your hand from where you are and let's speak over this precious woman of God and Hezekiah turned his face to the world and said Lord remember how that I have walked diligently before you and the Lord sends his servant again in the name of Jesus oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory please place your hand on her chest in the name of Jesus I declare right now every devil leaves now leaves now leaves now I bring you the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus we pray as the church in South Africa we pray as house of treasures you will leave and see the fullness of your days in hell you will see your children's children we close the gates of the grave in the name of Jesus we speak I stand in agreement with every man and woman of God in this place with the spiritual voices over this territory in the name of Jesus we banish death you are a spirit you have a voice we call you by name and we end your influence over her life 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 in the name of Jesus life life preserved by the power of God quickened by the spirit of life I use her as a point of contact and I declare life over you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus amen and amen God bless you bless you precious woman of God let's honor her pray for her we continue to stand until she is perfected in the name of the Lord put your hands together for
Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.